Fancy meeting you here, Karina. Last time we met, you were in bed with Hillary and Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Here's your drink. Sorry I have no whiskey. Will vodka do? Sure. Any booze is good booze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good booze. <laughs> what are you doing in Washington? Oh, I work here. Lots of money to be made. Like what? Well, it seems the party out of power wants dirt on the party in power, and they will pay for it. Say, if you're from Russia, how come you have no accent? Maybe I'm a spy. A spy? What? Got any dirt on the president? Dirt? All I can say is Trump's a nice guy. Let me slip into something a little more comfortable. Okay, Dicky Poo? Can you answer the door if someone comes? Okay, blonder tonguey girl. <laughs> Oh boy, maybe Dicky Poo is going to get lucky tonight. I'm such a babe magnet. Oops, I better answer that door. Who the hell are you? Oh my god, it's Nancy Pelosi! Ah! Alright, Dan. Alrighty then. Here we are on part three of this uh, 1935 Philco Model 89. Now uh, today, we're gonna take this out and uh, open it up and see what it looks like inside. This has got five uh, caps inside it, filled with tar, I believe, or maybe not. I don't know. Good, clean, wholesome fun. So we're gonna find out. I've already got the bottom screw off it, so but look at that. Look at the wood on this uh, pencil here. Cheap Chinese garbage. It says made in China right here. Cheap Chinese can't even use decent wood. Look at that. You sharpen it and it just looks like hell. Hell yeah. I have to get me some uh, American pencils. So let's take this out and look at it. Maybe there's a hundred dollar bill in there for me. That would be nice. There you have his mad dream. All right, I uh, added some labels on this side. So I know which ones are which. There's some tabs here. Got this solder there. Solder. Let's just pry those tabs off and uh, see if we can get it off. Take it off. We'll see if anybody's uh, been inside here. I got here just in time. Like it's gonna come out. It's gonna see the light of day for the first time since 1934. I see the light. Looks like there's the uh, the grounding wire there. See that? We need some excitement around here. Look at that mess. <laughs> Cut that off. Oh, look at that. Mm, mm, mm. I think I'll try to take some readings from these and see if they're still accurate. Let's test this one here. This one should be an 09. It's a 0.14, which is pretty close. Went up a little bit probably still good. Here's another 09. 0.14. Here's a 0.25. It's 0.31. 
Not bad. Here's a 0 .05. 0 .07. Another 0 .05. And a 0 .07. So those are perfectly fine, if you ask me. Who the fuck asked you? All that tar. What I think I'll do is I get a terminal strip, uh, solder all the caps on there, and then mount it on here somehow. So let's get that done. Well, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to use this terminal strip here. Put the caps on here, probably on both sides, stagger them. I'm going to use these five here. So let me get that soldered and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. And we'll put it in the can and then we'll test the radio. Well, there it is. Pretty much an ugly piece of crap, but it doesn't matter. It'll work. You're so ugly you could be a modern art masterpiece. It's ugly, but it's necessary. All right, I got it uh, wired. I'm using this uh, pushback wire I get from a radio days. It's 22 gauge. This is solid core here, so that's what it originally had. So I've got my ground hooked up to it. Let's just test the values on it to make sure I didn't screw up. These blue ones are 05s. We can't afford another screw up. Make it good. 47s was I put in there 0.047 right on the money these are uh, 0.1s I put in 0 0.1 0 0.1 and then the 0 0.25 0 0.24 all right I'm gonna situate it in the can Okay, I got it mounted on the box. I soldered the end of the uh, terminal strip onto the case here. Good. I actually used this uh, insulating material again. Nice! So all I have to do, put the wires through this hole oh! and seal it back up. All right, there it is. Say, that's pretty good. Don't look too shabby. I was about to wire the uh, the can in, and I got a wire from the can going over here. And if I soldered that on there, I just have to take it off again when I restuff these two electrolytics here. So I'm going to take these electrolytics out, put these puppies in there, and then I'll be done with that. And then I could put the rest of the wires of this, and then we can uh, then we can power it up. Here's the first one out. It's the one that's leaking there. The switch is kind of flaky. All right, let's see what's in that can after uh, 83 years. Cool, huh? Well, that's pretty cool. It's dry. At one time, I had a liquid in there. What a bad boy you are. I like that. No hundred dollar bill in it, but can't win them all. You know, I have a confession to make. When I finish a radio series, the radios all look so good. But that is through a camera's lens. 
The late great sports writer Bud Ferrillo used to say, anything that is recorded through a camera's lens is an illusion, not reality. So let's pursue this further. What you are seeing here is not John from Arkansas. You are seeing an image or illusion of John from Arkansas recorded through a camera's lens. Let's zoom up closer to show you what I'm talking about. This is as far as we can get with this camera, but if we look at it through a microscope using special software, here's what we actually see. The real John from Arkansas. Holy mackerel. All right, got the one in there. We'll put the other one in there and we'll try it out. Let's take a look right here. See the, uh, there's a hole here and a hole here. I'm thinking there might be a bearing that should be going in that hole there. What do you think? I don't know, George. That's why this thing is kind of flaky sometimes, doesn't receive. I think maybe it's not going into that hole like we're supposed to. You, you, you're, you, you're crazy, that's what I think. You're, you're screwing. I'm going to see if I can find a ball bearing and then put one in there. I've got the electrolytics in the cans here. Woohoo! And, uh, because of the wiring, there's some wires that go to the uh, speaker and stuff. I uh, rewired it. It's got one of these uh, three wire uh, things that I used in the last uh, video. You remember that when I hooked up the speaker? There was nothing but this crap here. That's what I removed. Just the ugly looking wire. And I've got all these wires from the can all going to where they're supposed to be, I think. Oh, brother. So without further ado, let's just turn it on here and see if it works. Fire it up, Doc. I'm pretty sure it's okay, so I'm going to just bring it up to 60 right away. Here. Hey, you remind me of a man. A man? A man with the power. What power? The power of who do? Who do? You do. Do what? You remind me of a man. What man? A man with the power. All right, let's just uh, put on about a hundred here. Okay, so far so good. Now when I uh, take these blocks out, I'm gonna do them one at a time and then put the caps in there, then test it, then go to the next one. I'm not gonna do them all in one fell swoop. I've got the thing working. I wanna keep it working and limit my uh, screw ups. So if I uh, change this and it doesn't work, I know I screw this up. I know this is uh, wired right. I know the speaker's wired right. <laughs> A lot of work to do. A lot of work. Okay, it's time for this thing to come out. So just let me uh, snip the wires here. It's in there pretty tight. We'll take it out and examine it and then uh, dig the tar out of there. Not me! Before we do that, let's take a look at it here. Hmm, is that normal for that thing to have that on there? Oops. Hey, look out, you big clumsy oaf! I guess these two wires are connected on here, which is grounded. Just let me uh, chop them off. 
Enough already! Low Buzz is in a little bit of a conundrum. What's that? Why, whoa! Now that that block is out, I have better access to take this off. And I think maybe it would be prudent to take this off while I can, clean it up, and then put the uh, block back in there later. I've already snipped those two wires, the ground wires off it. There's also three wires here that I need to take off so this could come out. Okay, well she's loose. Let us have one moment of silence. I guess I'll just snip these wires off. Hey, what are you trying to do? That'll give me the chance to put the new dial face on it. Let's just uh, snip this wire here, see if we can get that, that dial off. Chicken wire? More wire here. Now all we need is some wire and a plug. There you go. This looks extraordinarily bad. Here's this little uh, cutout here where the uh, the bulb shines through and it uh, highlights the uh, dial with the light. I always thought that was kind of cool. Me too. That's sort of a sort of a plastic type thing. See how that string is wound around these pulleys here? That looks in pretty good shape and I don't want to uh, wreck it. <laughs> I have to restring that, that's for sure. Are you yellow or something? I'm going to soak it with navel jelly and water. This is your mess and I'll be damned if I'm going to clean it up. And that leaves me with this mess here. <laughs> you know, I've been dragging my feet on this, but it's got to be done. Here's the tuning cap after I soaked it in uh, some dishwashing uh, detergent. I just stuck the whole thing in there. Cleaned it off pretty good. Clean as a whistle. Now I'm going to soak it in a combination of water and navel jelly. <laughs> Get off some of the rust here. Rust here. Some on the bottom. Here's our old friend navel jelly. Howdy, friend. Let's just uh, slob some on it. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Why? You sure spreading that on thick? People say you're not supposed to put it on aluminum, but I'm not going to leave it on that long. Aluminum, and not aluminum. In fact, I don't think it's going to hurt anything except the rest. Well, you've got nothing to be ashamed of. And I'll be having some water in a cup mixing it uh, with some of the uh, nail jelly and just keep uh, applying it until uh, it's clean. You know dirt cleans off a lot easier than blood cleaners. It's a sucky job. This sucks. But I'll put on a little Rush Limbaugh I mean, I, that's, I don't even want to mention the Bow Wow thing. Now I have to since you brought it up. And just listen to that. And every few minutes, just keep brushing it. In about an hour or two, it should be presentable. And I'll show you that when it's ready. You reap what you sow. I don't think this is going to interfere with this cord here. 
If it does, I'll just put it back on. I'm not worried anymore. It's got to be done. So let it be written. So let it be done. All right, well, this is uh, kind of soaking in here. I'm going to do that. Clean up this uh, rust that was from the uh, rat piss. Trust me, I know I'm good at this stuff. Okay, there it is about an hour and a half later. After I uh, got all the rust off and uh, the dirt and crap, I polished it up with a little flitz polish. I've been using this for years. It works good on metal and it works good on plastics too. So I recommend it. Let's just take a look at this. Don't you have any idea what you've done here? Oh, look at this. All lubed. And ready to go. Now all I have to do is finish up the chassis, which is going to take a long time to get it to where I want it. Anyway, this is the, uh, the crappy part you have to do on these radios. But it pays off on the end when it's nice and shiny. It's quality work. I have ordered some grommets for the uh, tuning cap here. And that's going to take a, maybe a week to get here. So hopefully I'll be able to get this together in time for next week. Hopefully. I'll make no promises. Ah, but old Buzz is going to go out in the barn and saddle up old paint <laughs> and ride off towards the sunset. Until next time, this is Buzz. Be good, and don't take any wooden nickels. One nickel carefully used would last a family a lifetime.